All right, so we just checked in. Um, the site manager, lovely guy. Um, and he's basically said, do not take your vehicles into the compound or you will come out with poor flat tires. So we're gonna do it anyway, because we got them all terrain. <laughs> going to get set up right now we're going to reprogram the drone deploy mission we did a bit of a site recce site tour and it's a very small site so we're planning two main missions. The first mission is a survey at about 65 meters, because that's our limit here. Um, and the idea of that survey is to basically generate a high res 2D map, similar to Google Maps, New Maps and whatnot. And with that, the client can um, use that as an indication of where bits are. Um, it's current, it's high res, um, and yeah, it's just good for them to use as a reference point. Then the second mission will be the actual stockpile measurements. Now the stockpile measurements, ideally, um, we like to do it in a couple of runs. So we're gonna do one a little bit lower to the ground, so 30 meters, 40 meters, and then at the top at 65 meters. So um, that's the second part. And then we'll generate that in drone deploy to get the volume calculations and send it off to the client. The site that we're filming on today, uh, happens to be within 300 miles of an airport and it's taken us a good two and a half months it's, I'd say uh, to get approvals to fly uh, sending out NOTAMs, contacting the airport all the kind of fun stuff that goes in flying within 300 miles there is a video on that check it out down below the chopper right above me um, about a kilometer away not an issue for us because they will know about our operation as we've just we uh, we've issued a NOTAM so they'll know about us we know about them first mission has been completed we've captured 59 images it's automatically coming down now uh, so what I'm gonna do is once it lands going to slowly manually guide it down, but once it lands, we're going to review the footage, make sure everything's sharp and okay, and then we'll go back up for the other, the other missions. We've just done uh, the stockpile scan. Now the stockpile scan, I've actually selected the enhanced 3D um, tab on in drone deploy and also the perimeter 3D. So what happens with that is instead of going up and down like that, shooting straight down, you go up and down like that, but also cross half, so left and right. Um, and after that, it goes around the edge of the perimeter of the area where, and the camera is tilted to a 45 degree angle and it will just literally just shoot like that all the way around the edge. So this is to enhance the 3D look. So if you want to create 3D models, this is the best way to do it. Next up, we're just kind of um, getting the phantom up and getting some basic images and videos around the site, just for some extra footage to hand over to the client. I mean, the survey stuff is great, but they also love um, just general photos of the whole area. Some flyovers, um, nothing spectacular, nothing cinematic, just a real basic scan of, of the area. All right guys, so the job has been complete, mission successful. Next up, we're just gonna quickly pack down, sign out of the site, go back to the office and process our data. All right guys, welcome back. We're in the studio and this section, I'm gonna take you through the data processing part. So what do we do with all these images that we took on site? There's plenty of programs out there. The program that we use is Drone Deploy. You've got things like Drone Harmony, GS Pro, uh, there's Pix4D, Propeller, lots of different programs out there for capturing the data on site or the drone survey and also the processing. So you can actually use any of these programs like GS Pro for the data capture 
And if you, let's say, use Propeller or Drone Deploy, you can simply upload that data into that software and process it from there. So you don't have to use the actual program you're using to capture. Um, but in this case, nice and easy. I think Drone Deploy has it very, very well and easy to follow, very user friendly. So we use Drone Deploy to pre-plan the flight, execute the job, come back, and we're still using Drone Deploy again for the processing. So what you're gonna do first is make sure you get your SD card out of your drone, obviously, chuck it in your computer. Then we're gonna start doing some sorting. So all the images that we took, we're gonna make sure we put those in the individual files. So I mentioned we did the operation in two passes or the two surveys. One was the whole site. So make sure you create a folder that says whole site or something like that. Use Adobe Bridge or one of those programs where you can see all the images at a glance. Select those images from that particular whole site operation, drag it into the folder and rinse and repeat for the other site. The other site, you're gonna have a look at where those images uh, started and ended, select them all and then chuck them into the other folder. Now, it's better to do it this way because then you can kind of keep a track of where those individual images are in those folders and you can easily get to them down the track. And it's also easier from the uploading point of view so you don't get confused um, or move the wrong image into the wrong folder. All right, once you do that, you're gonna go into Drone Deploy. Okay, so once you get into Drone Deploy, you're gonna select the mission that correlates to the images that you've uploaded. If you want, you can rename the mission just to make things clearer for you down the track or for your clients. Once you do that, there's a section underneath here that just says drag and drop photos, or you can click the button to upload the images. So nice and simple, One nice and simple, select the blue button that says select photos, go into your finder to where you added those photos, select all, and then select open. That will drop it all in. Once all those images are in, you will see a bit of a bit of a map that pops up with blue dots. These are the images that have been taken around the site. Then you can select the map type. There's either terrain or structures. For this, we're going to hit terrain. It will take between 0.2 to 1 hour for processing. Um, if all looks good, you, you've also got options. You've also got options down the bottom, advanced options where you can select turbo upload. This is where it will upload very quickly so it can spit something out um, super, super fast. It's not 100% accurate or clean or crisp or clear or, you know, of a high resolution, but at least if your client is with you on site and you want to quickly show them something within a few minutes, that's a good option um, to select for that. We're going to leave at the quality at the highest. We're not going to use Turbo Upload. Then down the bottom, select Upload Images and away you go. Now what's going to happen is it's going to upload all those images to the server of Drone Deploy and it will give you a little message on the bottom at the end once it's finished. Once you do that, simply do it again for the second data set. Now as you can see, the smaller stockpile uh, part has way, way more photos because we were taking those around the perimeter. We were taking shots at 45 degree angle, also looking straight down. So you basically want a lot of data for your 3D models and your stockpile measurements. You need to capture all these different angles um, to create a higher, more accurate map at the end. All right, cool. Then you wait for it to upload. You will get an email saying that your data has been processed. Once this has all been processed, you can jump back into Drone Deploy, select the operation. And what you can see here is a high res 2D map of the survey site. This site here is the smaller one. I'm going to flick over quickly to the whole site. And as you can see, nice and high res. You can zoom right, right down into the details and you can pretty much count all the number of tires here. Like it's super, super high res. Even though we flew this, I think at about 60 meters, it's still a, of a very high quality. The only time when the mapping software kind of mucks up a little bit in the stitching is when you've got corrugated iron or roofs that have a lot of patterns like that. <laughs> Lots of lines next to each other. The software just finds a little bit hard to stitch together and you can see a few stitching errors here. But to be honest, for something like this and what your client is looking for in an overall high res 2D map, they're not going to care really about that detail. So as I said, this map, the first map that we did is the whole site survey. 
We're gonna export that as a high-res JPEG or a PDF for them. They can print that, they can put it up on their uh, warehouse or their site, and they can you know, mark up on their entrance, exits, um, emergency, um, assembly points, whatever they wanna do with it, but it's a high-res, it's accurate, it's recent. It's a great feature to have on top of the general server that you're doing. All right, so then we switch over to the stockpile and you can see here it's super high res. Once again, we shot this at a lower, re a lower altitude, which means the resolution of this is gonna be even sharper. You can even see the tread on the tires. I mean, this thing's pretty, it's pretty spectacular in terms of what you can get out of this. Now on the left here, you can switch it across to a model, which is super cool. It generates a 3D model of what you've just surveyed um, using the photogrammetry and also GPS points on your map. It gives you like a nice visual. It impresses your clients, I guess. They can scroll, zoom in, move around the area um, just to get a better look at these stockpiles. But I am going to focus on the stockpile measurements and also do some basic markups. So on the left here, under tools, we're gonna select the volume uh, icon. Now what this will do is you'll you pretty much have to select a little boundary around the stockpile. Make sure you select the path on the flat part of the map and not to touch any of the actual pile. Otherwise your uh, measurements will be a little bit skewed. Once you've done this, select the last button or the last dot point and this will give you the first stockpile. Rename it as uh, stock. Pile one, there we go. And you can see already the measurements here, the area, the cut and the fill. Uh, then we're gonna do that again for the other, uh, other stockpile here. There we go. Once that's done, stockpile two. Very simple. So now in our stockpile, we've got these two, two piles here. Also, I like to do for stockpile measurements is sometimes they they might want to have an I want to get an idea of the length and the width of the stockpile. So here you can measure distance with the distance tool. Select up the top and down the bottom where you want the distance to be measured from, and end. Click the button and we'll go here. Distance or length. Okay, and already here you can see the elevation of the highest point, which is about 5.51 meters. And the lowest point, you can see the surface length, the horizontal length, so that's 25 meters in length. The slope, vertical heights, a lot of really cool information here. Um, I might actually change the color of the length just so we don't all get confused with the same blue. I'm gonna make that orange, go back a step. Add another distance from left to right, maybe at the widest points, here to here. And I'm gonna go width two, go to orange. There we go. All right. So now we've got a couple of annotations there. Now, another cool thing is you can, if you select elevation, it'll give you an elevation map of the whole area, um, which looks like this. I'll just turn the annotations off. So this part in the red shows you the highest point of your stockpile and then the part in the blue shows the lowest grade gradient of the whole site. Also important for things like if we if you're in a if you're operating in an area where there's a lot of heavy rainfall and flash flooding occurs then you can work out where that water is going to kind of channel to. So you might want to move your I don't know let's say office from that particular area where all the water will pile up and flood to higher ground you know there's lots of information you can get from it but this is um yeah pretty cool so that's that's basically the end of creating a volume estimate there's one thing to to kind of realize from something like this it's not you're not going to get a hundred percent accuracy on on stockpile measurements so just be aware of that and also be aware that your client is aware of of this as well. Um, we didn't use any ground control points for the overall survey, which means the accuracy and of the survey wouldn't be to the centimeter. Um, you may be out by maybe a few centimeters or even a meter, 
Um, but in this case, they're not going for accuracy for the survey. They just want volume estimates. So just keep that in mind and also be careful with that. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna export a report out and Drone Deploy has their own standard templates, uh, reports that you can generate and export out. It's okay, it's pretty cool. Um, it works well. You can obviously create your own and just export out the images. But this is what it looks like. So what it does, it gives you an interactive PDF. You can zoom in. It gives you the two piles that we selected and they're in an image or in a top-down format. And then down the bottom, it gives you a high level view of the um, distance annotations that we added. So the length and the width and also the volume calculations of the different stockpiles that we measured. Now, once you're happy with this, you can export this out as a CSV or you can share it as a, uh, a PDF or a high-res JPEG, I believe. But um, yeah, either way, it's a pretty handy tool to have. All right, guys, I hope you learned a thing or two on this job shadow. Thanks for joining us. If you want to get into drone work, don't forget to check out our online courses below, dronemasterclassacademy.com. Hit subscribe for more videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.